nobody was sort of porting over um, this concept of HGTV onto YouTube. Mm. YouTube was basically becoming de facto TV you right. know, for, for a newer generation. And people were taking concepts like ESPN, putting them over there. And HGTV was like the second biggest uh, cable network. Welcome back to Lifetime Cashflow Through Real Estate Investing. I'm Rod Cleef, and I am thrilled that you're here. And we've got a unique guest today. His name is Lincoln Edwards, and uh, Lincoln uh, hosts Austin Flipsters. And so they uh, they flip houses uh, right now in, in Austin and, and Dallas, and you're in Dallas now, right? That's right. Awesome. awesome. Welcome to the show, brother. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Yeah. So uh, we started talking before we started recording, and, and you... Uh, I uh, got an MBA at Harvard, cool as hell, you know, very fancy, schmancy stuff. Cause seems from a guy that didn't even go to college, but uh, actually my dad used to teach there. So. Oh, is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. At the business school? Or yeah, the... no, 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 sociology. So, okay. Yeah, yeah but uh, anyway, um, yeah, so um, you have a YouTube channel, uh, a pretty significant YouTube channel. You show people how to flip, and you've got a pretty cool business model as well we're going to dig into. So why don't you... Uh, Give us a little of your backstory. I, I stole a little bit of it there. but <laughs> No, yeah. yeah, all good, as you mentioned it. Yeah, I, I um, stumbled into real estate sort of backwards coming out of business school. I, I really wanted to get into private equity and mm -hmm. uh, found a job at a real estate private equity shop. And I thought, mm -hmm. well, how much difference is there <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> really? Yeah, you know, quite a bit, as it turns out. But, um, mm -hmm. you know, cut my teeth kind of learning uh, commercial real estate. And then eventually went out on my own and started doing, uh, I, I started with multifamily. I, I thought I would sort of, um, work in that space, bought a little 12 unit, uh, building and then kind of got the bug for fix and flip on a whim. Uh, did a project just to sort of see if I could went well, did another one and in then, Austin. Yeah. All in Austin. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, you know, about, uh, 2018 partnered up with an old college friend of mine, uh, named Lauren Arns and created this sort of social media brand around, uh, house flipping. I, I was really getting into sort of the YouTube rabbit hole and realized nobody was sort of porting over um, this concept of HGTV onto YouTube. Mm. And really, HT, you know, YouTube was basically becoming de facto TV you right. know, for, for a newer generation. And people were taking concepts like ESPN, putting them over there. And HGTV was like the second biggest uh, cable network right. uh, at the time. And nobody was doing it on uh, mm. YouTube. So I thought, well, why not us? And there, there's a lot <laughs> to building that out as it turns out. But but basically talked her into com creating our brand, you know, awesome posters on YouTube and yeah, started building that in, in 2018 and. Oh, wow. It's, yeah. You've been doing it a while. Okay. Been working on it. Yeah. For, for a few years now. Exactly. Wow. So, um, you, uh, you, I mean, just let's talk about the show for a minute just so people can an idea. I mean, is it like the flipping stuff you see on HGTV where, you know, you go in, you look at the house, it's all crappy and they you fix it up and then flip it. Yeah, it's basically that. Yeah, yeah we, we, we take our projects that we're already going to do. Obviously, we we come, we critique and we tour and we kind of put together a, a plan for what we're going to do and then take you along for that journey. And the twist, you know, really is in the age of social media, we can be doing this stuff real time and let audiences interact or vote on material choices uh you know on our instagram oh, cool. channel in real time so you don't have to wait for the episode to come out uh and try to make it interactive in that way oh that's smart yeah exactly they can pick the colors they can pick all the the fat uh, yeah yeah pieces. yeah to some extent you know it's always some choices we're okay with yeah, right. <laughs> either way purple's not going to work there i'm sorry right okay yeah, oh exactly. that's funny yeah that's awesome yeah and then you get the big payoff at the end you know you nice. get to kind of see the thing fully made over oh that's cool you've been flipping houses and you created this channel around um flipping to show people how it's done uh called austin flipsters on youtube and um t t talk about your your biggest win in the flipping in the flip flipping space and, and then I'm, you know i'm gonna go to the flip side mm -hmm. the biggest seminar you know i call them seminars yeah, yeah 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 talk about your biggest win um well in the for the actual real estate you know the biggest win in real estate and the biggest win on the media are complete opposites okay right well real estate's what i was yeah thinking. exactly okay. so so on the real estate side you know our biggest win um was a historic house that was built in 1938 in austin wow. sort of just south of downtown mm -hmm. in travis heights which is like a, a primo real estate area 
Um, and it was actually condemned the property. Oh, wow. So it was, oh, I God. Think, you had to deal with a lot of stuff there then. Yeah, wow. exactly, okay. exactly. And, I, I, you know, we were a bit crazy to think we could bring it back. But the reason I did it is it sat on a corner lot, and that main house is up front, but it had this sort of... Carriage house? Uh, yeah, exactly. And, mm-hmm. and and they turned this into a little duplex in the back mm-hmm. and hadn't been properly permitted in all this. But the idea was, um, you know, if we could split that lot or actually condoize it mm. we could sell off that back unit once it was sort of you know brought up to oh. up to snuff mm-hmm. and then make over the front unit to be um you know the full transformation Bring it back house. to the way it was exactly so really the value in that deal um you know we, i think we bought it for seven hundred fifty thousand mm. dollars bo- both both and then we put in gosh A maybe lot. five hundred thousand yeah. into the thing and sold it for uh, well, it must have been a little bit less than that. We made about half a million dollars on it. Nice. And so, so we sold it for one and a half, one point six, nice. something like that. And really the, the, what I loved about that play is that really it was all, all the real value that we drove was just a condo regime and, and the insight to say, Hey, the, we can separate out this back unit. Mm-hmm. And basically we ended up selling the back unit for about 500. So mm-hmm. we, we really broke even on that front house and it was you know, it was a gorgeous transformation. Sure. But all the money was made on the back. Sure. You know, some of my most successful warriors, my coaching students are the ones that can take a look at something and see what it could be and, or, you know, really think outside the box. Like, uh, you know, I've got a lot of, a lot of them doing, uh, you know, land projects where they'll buy a little self storage piece that's got more land and then they expand the self storage or they build a retail component or they, you know, mixed use things of that nature. It's really cool to see some of the creativity that they're coming up with. Mm -hmm. So you, you looked at this and you saw you saw possibility. I love it. You know, it's funny, um, in Denver, I had 500 houses in Denver at one time, and I probably had 30 or 40 antebellum houses that were pre, what is it, uh, to 1900, built uh-huh. in 1900 or right around there. And uh, um, they, they, were, they were challenging. You know, the windows with the ropes and the weights and all that. Did you have all that in that place? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was, you know, it was crazy, too, because it was half pier and beam foundation and half slab. Oh, and wow. It had been cobbled together over the years. And Wow, yeah. You know, of course, you, you've... Probably enhanced, actually, because it probably slipped a little bit. The pier, the, You know, typically, they'll put the pier and beam in when things start to look shaky. I mean, so those, those old foundations were brick. Yeah. You know, they just have bricks stacked up. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And honestly, I, it is, you know, you asked for the biggest one. It was the biggest financial win, but is definitely not what I would say needs to be your bread and butter of no. fix and flip <laughs> no. because it was so much work. It was no. so unlike sort of yeah. the singles and doubles that, yeah. you know, a lot of people make money on fix and flips, but it was just one of these projects that calls to you. You see that vision. And oh, is that what it was? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Those, 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 that's like a passion project. But, you know, I remember some of those old clawfoot tubs and, mm-hmm. and, and fireplaces that were just gorgeous with, yeah. um, you know, the mantles with the pillars and stuff and just beautiful, beautiful stuff. That, and now that, you know, it's funny. I could just, and I'll stop talking here in a minute, but, but I, I could buy whole blocks in downtown Denver for $20,000 a house, and they're now well in the millions. Wow. These are big, giant, three-story you know, three homes that they've complete, completely, yeah. Woulda, coulda, shoulda, you know, if you can get in front of an area that's gentrifying, yeah. boom. But it, but it takes cojones because, you know, you're going to deal with drugs and crime and everything until things shift. But you start seeing the, you know, the, the coffee shops come in. You start seeing some of that stuff, the arts, the artsy art studios and stuff. So talk about a seminar. Talk about a, a, a setback in your flipping business. Talk about, you know, a, a lesson. Yeah, yeah, totally. I mean, everybody's got lots of them, but pick, a, a, pick a doozy. A um, you know, I, I think in this business, one, the, one of the biggest lessons I learned was with who you work with, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So definitely biggest sort of setback and learning that I've had is with basically a, a business partner that was a contractor that I, you know, trusted with several projects and basically was playing a shell game with, wow. with funds and, and trying to trying to basically keep his business alive by taking on more and more projects until the his house of cards sort of collapsed and you know i was unfortunately the bag holder on several of of those projects where i had to come in and pay for some renovations twice basically and yeah that was a it was a huge lesson learned for me and Mm -hmm. and this was a person that like i said i you know i trusted and and had done several deals with and, and and sometimes you just you never know what's going on behind the scenes and you know everybody Unfortunately, not, not everybody, but if you're, I'm dealing with the exact same thing right now. So, you know, I feel you. The lesson there 
is, you know, I think because I've had the same thing happen where I, I just, you know, you, you get you start to trust someone and you you, you can't just trust. You got to trust, but verify right. as well. That's right. the piece. That's the missing piece. Was that the missing piece in your case? It wasn't yeah. mine for sure. hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. And, yeah. I, and I'm just like you, uh, you know, somebody said, you know, gives me their word, their word is their bond. And I believe them. Yeah. But you know, what I've, I've shifted to now is not, I, I don't think you can do business if your MO is, well, I don't trust anybody or right. I have to make no, deals course. so onerous and complicated. But I, you know, I think there are some sim very simple deal mechanics that sort of are, you know, a, a stop gap from, from things like that happening. And it's simple stuff about, you know, structuring, let's say, you know, more uh, payment milestones draws. in a deal, more yeah. draws, more mm -hmm. payment milestones rather than less. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it, it, people get annoyed with that. Well, why do I, you mm -hmm. know, I want to be cutting checks all the time or it's more of a hassle. I'd, I'd like to just write one big check at the end when it's done. You know, and then the reality is that just increases that exposure, right? Sure, so sure. if you can dial that back, um, you know, and I, I've had this happen on on stuff that was sort of like less nefarious, but you know, I've had contractors that have literally died in the middle of a project. No kidding! Wow. wow. Yeah, and, and it's like, well, wow, how much money do I have out to that person? Right. Because, you know, th that's that money's never coming it's back. It's gone. Yeah, no. You know, one thing that I try to teach my students is 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 try not to get ahead of people very far. Just just, you know, pay as the work is done. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes some of these operators will need a little money for material and whatnot. And I've even gone and bought the material sometimes. Say, Here's the material instead of giving them the cash. You know, back in the day when I really couldn't afford to have a loss, but uh interesting. Um so in the flipping business, um you, the contractors is probably one of the biggest um, shaky areas that you really got to button down. Do you, by the way, when you do a contract, besides now that you're doing multiple draws just to protect how much money you put out, do you also put time limits on, on the work and do you, do you penalize them if the work's not done in a time limit? Just curious. Yeah. You know, I, I've tried that. Mm -hmm. Um, and a lot of people will swear by it, but I, you know, I find it simpler to just cut that contractor loose, if right? That happens, yeah. yeah, there because there are, you know, there are things that happen that are within somebody's control versus not. So, right. you know, if we're redoing a foundation, we've got we've had a ton of rain, that's going to push back everybody's timelines. Um, Fair enough. No, so, that makes so sense. what I find easier is, hey, look, a, a reasonable deposit, payment milestones, hold back something at the end so that you got to pass your permitting, pass your inspections so that you've got some incentive to come back. Um, and then if I got to fire you mid project, I'm, I don't have too much exposure. Mm -hmm. And if you're the bottleneck to this whole thing, well, it was a pleasure doing business with you on one and never again. And, and with, you know, residential, it's not one huge project where, you know, right. you, you can get away with giving somebody, you know, a project if it doesn't work out and, and you don't have too much exposure on that one. Yeah. You can cut them loose and find sure, somebody else. Sure, sure, sure. Well, I'm, you saw the mess out in my compound here. I'm dealing with that right now with a contractor, and I didn't even think to put a time limit on the thing. But, yeah. uh, you know, they, they're, uh, they're, I, I sent them a scathing text this, <laughs> this morning. Like, you know, we'll, we, we'll start your job, and we won't leave till it's done. Well, your ass hasn't been here in four right. days. Yeah, that's so, what I find. The, yeah. the, having, having the incentive set up right where, mm -hmm. you know, they want to be here because they got a whole lot of money that mm -hmm. they're waiting on uh, is just – it's a better use of the carrot than the stick. In yeah. My experience. Oh, I, I don't disagree. The problem is they already got the carrot. They've eaten the carrot. Exactly. That's the problem. They got their second draw when they delivered the pavers. Exactly. So, so talk about, uh, uh, homemade homemade.co. Uh, so that's, uh, that's your done for you flipping. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right, I want to hear about it. Yeah. So, you know, the idea is, I don't, I don't know if you've ever, um, you know, saw anything online. There's, there's sort of Amazon. You can go buy on Amazon and then there's Shopify. Uh, that basically empowers individual sellers to sell online. So the idea behind homemade is really to empower individual fix and flippers, individual investors to get into the, you know, the home renovation space to do fix and flips for themselves to compete with the 800 pound gorillas in the room. Um, it's basically flipping as a service. Are there 800 pound gorillas in the room? Yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah. In the flipping oh yeah. Business. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, there's the, Amherst the SFR threes of the world, you know, people that are built that have, uh, you know, put together a huge pile of capital and that are doing it okay. on and, and, you know, for the, for 60% of fix and flips, they're done by first or second timers. Right. That's why I asked. Yeah. Exactly. I, I assumed it was even more than that. Okay. Yeah. It, it, well, it may well be, but uh, you know, it's, um, 
and there just aren't tons of in sort of uh, institutional grade tools, platforms for those folks to use. No, and a lot of it true. is basically repeating the exact same errors that the last guy did when he did it and his didn't work out. Well, you know, maybe this time will be different. Mm -hmm. um, but it's flipping as a service. So we're basically, uh, you know, we're identifying projects for, for people to take down. We're scoping them. Um, we've, we've got sort of, uh, think of like a fast food menu of, of material selection. So do you want the number one, the number two, so where you're not mm. picking the fifth faucet in the last bathroom or whatever, so that we can also then kind of copy and paste that to our flips. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we execute that as the general contractor for, for our clients at Homemade, and then we work on an exit plan for them. So that might be as a sale, that might be as a long-term rental, or even as a short-term rental, or, uh, you know, whatever they want to do with it basically. Interesting. Uh, but yeah, we do it sort of turnkey that way. You're not, you know, a lot of the fixing and flipping, uh, world has this sort of disjointed feel where you work with your buyer's agent to find the property, but then, you know, they're not there with you on the construction of it or, you know, does the renovation of it really make sense? They're, they've, they've got their check and they're gone versus we sort of make money all, all along that value chain by helping at, at each step, but it makes the, the overall project a lot more cohesive and really eliminates or reduces the execution risk of, of hmm. you know, the fix and flip switch, which is, which is basically what, what most people get tripped up on. It's not running the numbers or, you know, looking at comps. It's, it's the, the blocking and tackling of actually getting the thing an appropriate scope for an appropriate price to where you can hit those back end comps, right? Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you some detailed questions on of this course. if that's okay. Oh, sure. uh, so so, um, are you looking for clients that are just in a lot of cash, or are they going to secure financing as well? So we do both. So okay. if you want to do it all cash, obviously you can. Right. Uh, and I should say it's not an investment vehicle, so we take no economics in the property itself, and our clients buy them directly. So so they can do whatever they want with them. Um, we have preferred uh, financing partners that that underwrite and put terms attached to the deal and the scope that we propose that we put out to the to the to the clients to say here's a project here's the house plus the renovation plus what a lender will lend on it. So you could take those lending terms, sort of take it or leave it. Got it. So is that hard money typically? Typically, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So it's going to be higher interest with some points and stuff. Exactly. No, no prepayment penalties, but you're or sometimes no. maybe prepayment. But the nice thing about uh, the reason we have preferred financing partners is because they tier their pricing based on experience, right? So if you're a first timer, you're going to get a much higher rate than you would if you've done five, ten, twenty of these. So we basically work a deal with them that says, hey, give give our new folks the same rate that you're going to give your experienced folks because you're leveraging ours. Mm. Um, so it winds up being cheaper on the financing, particularly if it's, if it's you know your first or second deal. Okay, okay, and so um, so you're looking for someone that's that's got some money to invest that wants to do a flip. Um, do you have any historical return numbers? Yeah, so. Um, we're, we're um, targeting a 25% ROE figure, and that can obviously vary if it's- The target is 25% return on your money. Exactly. Cash As out of pocket. Yeah, assuming- so cash on cash return, basically. Exactly, assuming okay. you're using leverage, right? Okay, got um, it. So, and that, that varies, obviously, up and down. So we just mm -hmm. have, hit, um, I think our, our episode coming out this week, it was a great, it was a great one to the upside where- um, guy hit like a 60% cash on cash. Cause we got multiple offers, got bid up. Mm. That's a huge win. Right. Um, you know, and then we've, we've have others where it's like, you know, for our clients, it's like a break even mm. you win some, you lose some. Mm -hmm. Um, well, thank you for that honesty. Of course, yeah. of yeah. course, you know, and, and, and that's the main thing is that, like I said, we're trying to disaggregate the execution risk from the market risk. And we make very clear, look, you're a market investor, so the market's going to do, and, and, and we, we submit sort of our comps, um, and we say, hey, this is what we think you can get on the back end. Um, verify that, and we use our own set of comps. We also use a third-party report that just as a sanity check, and then we encourage, obviously, our investors to look at that. But, but that's sort of the job that you're doing as an investor is to say, hey, do we think this is believable? Yeah. And we've basically, um, for, for all of our projects, we've, we've nailed the execution in the middle, i.e. the renovation and cost. Um, and, and where the numbers have not worked as well for folks, it's because those back end values, uh, you know, we didn't get an offer, what we thought we got one less, or we priced a little too high, 
and you know had to draw that back and and, and that's completely the discretion of of our investors so on the exit strategy we let you sort of decide we'll work with you and say hey this is what we think you should list at but if you want to go aggressive you're welcome to or obviously if you're listing it for rent you can um and and the name of the game in the house flipping world really is is about the the cycling of the same cash right so i was sort of when I, when I list my own properties, I put them on there and I take sort of the first reasonable offer that comes along. I don't try and price them too high mm-hmm. because if I can cycle that same cash over twice in a year and I can make, you know, let's call it on average 25% on, mm-hmm. uh, on a project, if I can do that twice in a year and suddenly that's a fabulous return. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. If, if I got to wait several months more, you know, yeah. hold out, yeah. then, then it doesn't really work. No, nope. right. well, it works, but it doesn't doesn't. It's not as it's not as lucrative exactly. for sure. Um, okay. And you said you've done about thirty of these so far. Is that right? Yeah, we launched January of last year. We've done about thirty of them or so. That's quite a few. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got a decent team going. So, do you um, do you own the construction company or do you sub it all out? Uh, yeah. So we so we're the direct general contractor with folks. It. So they okay. sign a they sign a contract for us uh, directly with us, and then obviously you know we sub out. And so, so, so obviously you don't do this because you're a kind, altruistic guy. What, uh, <laughs> how do you get paid? Yeah. So, so we basically make money, um, in the same traditional ways other folks would along that whole value chain. Okay. So for so we example, make, so we make a, like a buyer's agent, um, oh, so commission. You got the real estate commission. Okay. Exactly. So we'll make about 3% on the, mm-hmm. on the front side of these things. Um, and then we take a markup on the on the construction. Okay. Uh, it's usually we average about eighteen percent markup on that okay. construction, uh, which is pretty standard. From cost, exactly. Okay, cost well, plus about eighteen percent. Yeah, that's not bad. Um, and then we make money on the back end, so we'll list and, and t- we list for uh, for a four percent total fee for folks. So and we take one percent of that and give three to the buyer's agent commission. Oh. Um, so we'll we'll make money there as well. So you know. Wow. You aggregate those three things together, we can do pretty well on the project. But we don't, like I said, we don't take any upside or downside on on those projects, and and let the investors be the investors, and and we're really empowering them. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Um, man, my comment is, my 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 thought is, man, that's a lot of work for just those pieces. I, yeah. I I'm, uh, but you know, if you've if you've systemized it. Um, yeah. That, that then, okay, and 30, you know, I guess 30 is some decent, decent change. Yeah. You well, know. you know, like I said, I think, th- you know, that this is our business model today. And the All reason right. I take inspiration from Shopify, I don't know if you're, you've ever um, read up on them, but they started as a, uh, a snowboard shop, right? So okay. they were, they were selling um, snowboards and realize, I mean, they were just not the back end e commerce tools that they needed to be able to fulfill that sort of profitably at scale. Mm. Um, and, had to build those out and then realized, I Hey, I did hear them. It was on a Tim Ferriss. He interviewed the CEO. Okay. Yeah. And he's in Austin, by the way. Anyway, I'm sorry to interrupt. No, all good. Okay. I've okay. not listened to that, but I've, you know, I've read yeah. their story and, and so they're, they're selling the picks and shovels. And really that's, that's what we want to do because that, that ultimately that market is so much bigger and it's, uh, than, than what we could ever fulfill. And then, and we want to empower it that way. So right now we're fulfilling sort of manually that, that full value chain. But you know, our dream is to scale that up such that we're disaggregating it and fulfilling a lot of that virtually. So maybe that middle piece, instead mm-hmm. of actually handling the construction, you know, we've got vetted contractors and more of a platform in each space where we're we're referring you out to contractors mm-hmm. in in your market where we've got a master services agreement to where they okay. we know they'll do these uh, scope items for this price, and mm-hmm. and now we're taking maybe a smaller referral fee, but we're we're not fulfilling. Interesting. Um, Interesting. So that's where you see this potentially going. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So, so we want to scale, um, or, or you know, the, the other analogy I use for it is sort of like trying to build a, a self-driving car, and right now we're building a taxi fleet. You know what I mean? Gotcha. So we're driving those cars ourselves, and over time, you know, it can go from you know taxi and we own the car to hey maybe it's Uber and and we're working with local fulfillment, hmm. and then ultimately you get to that self-driving uh, where it's it's more turnkey and digital, but you you. The, the key to that is really the data, right? And that's okay. what we're doing right now. We're controlling that full experience to get the data on a ton of houses, fulfilling ourselves with that as the vision. But in the, in the short term, there's economics for us on, sure, on a no, project. Sure, you're making money. Well, that's good. Um, 
And it, it, I, I, obviously, they're not all wins. They can't be, uh, you know, because now, now what's the impact of uh, interest rates right now on your business model? 2023 was a challenging year because it was a sort of actively declining residential market. So that that's really the hardest thing and, and why the projects that didn't work out didn't work out because we, you know, we penciled an exit here. If the market declines in the, the interim. Yeah, you, um, you can't you can't forestall that. It, it, yeah, or, that's that's yeah. hard. Um, but we we underwrite every deal saying basically assuming a flat market and why flat? Because I don't that's have a, smart. I don't no, have a crystal ball. Yeah, either that's way. conservative. Good. Exactly. Yeah. OK. Um, so so if it pencils that way, we'll do it. And the impact of the interest rates has really been um, not, hey, did the individual economics of a deal work? But it's really like what deals are available. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of mark, a lot, a lot of uh, sellers are just Aren't, not entering the market. Right. They're not selling because they, they can't get a decent interest rate on their new house. Exactly. Yeah. That's exactly it. So I well, think there's a pent up demand. Exactly. Yeah, that's what I was. I was just wondering the, the impact of all that on, on the business model. Right. And there was enough of a run up preceding that that folks have enough equity. They can sit on a on a house. Mm-hmm. Um, now, I, I think you will start to see that change. And, you know, people that bought sort of peak of the market in 2021, as they need to uh, move on, uh, you know, that, that, that could get rough if, if you don't have a lot of built-in equity. Um, but that's been the biggest challenge is just finding the deals that where the economics pencil. Mm. Um, so we've shifted to work with folks um, to do sort of a, a hybrid of what I, what I described to you where, hey, we're finding the deal and scoping it to where, hey, now we'll work with somebody if they've got a deal. Because mm. that, that solves that problem for us. So oh, that's a good idea. If you've got a, if you're a client and you found a, 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 a property wherever, mm. well, hey, we'll just run the rest of that play for the value chain. We'll scope it, apply our materials package to it, run the project for you. Uh, and that sort of solves that problem for us uh, Interesting. as well. Interesting. You're geographically bound with that second uh, model? Uh, yeah, as, as of today, as right. of today. Mm-hmm. Um, but we'll expand that. And, uh, you know, I think kind of all the major metros that make sense for flipping, you know, we'll expand into that. And, and that's one of the ways that we're excited to do that is, is for other folks that are bringing in the deals. Yeah, no, it's a great idea. Actually, do, kind of a done for you, uh, for a wannabe flipper that's found a place. So let me ask you this, in, in your core business, um, what are you doing to find deals? You know, obviously you've got realtor relationships, but are you doing any direct to seller marketing, anything like that? Yeah, we do, um, you know, we do all the sort of traditional stuff if you have ever gone down the rabbit hole of, of mm-hmm. deal sourcing on, on residential mm-hmm. real estate. Yeah. Banded um, signs, postcards. Yeah, exactly. Chunky mail or what they call it? Uh, chunky, yeah, chunky. <laughs> All this. Yeah, yeah and, and, and varying returns. You know, I'd say the highest ROI things, you know, the, the, the direct mail seems like, for us, seems like it doesn't work until it really works, mm. i.e. Interesting. You know, hard, hard to get bites. And then, you know, a couple times a year we'll get one that's just got 100K of just instant equity on the mm. thing. Um, but I'd say the stuff that's really, um, you know, profitable and consistent is relationships. You know, just nothing beats relationships with who? With uh, with agents, agents gotcha. that have market uh, that, that come across properties that, you know, aren't a great fit that wouldn't finance traditionally because they've got. Well, major- they're beat up, and you're not going to get a, a a a wife to accept it because it's exactly. so beat up. Yeah. And then, and a lot of times, a lender literally won't lend on it because mm. it has major structural damage mm. to the foundation gotcha. or roof or something like that that has to be fixed. Um, so, yeah. so working with those folks, um, and then we do a ton of MLS as well. So we've, we've, we've set up software that scrapes the MLS every day, mm. assigns sort of a, a, a lead score to mm-hmm. each property and then feeds it to our inbox to offer on a daily basis and, you know, ups, updates us and so stuff. So you do a lot of offers. You throw a lot of stuff. Yeah. It's a lot of kissing frogs basically. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and that's part of the value, the, the value too. For, for this is an asset class. It, it you got to kiss a ton of frogs to find that deal. You know? Hmm. Yeah. Well, same in our business, same in the multifamily, you know, gosh, I bet we looked at 200 properties to, to find the one we're under contract on right now. By the way, if you're accredited, you need to check out this deal. It's 200 units in San Antonio, right yep. down the road from you, uh, a mile away from another 296 unit that we have. We're assuming 4% debt or four, foreign change and seven years left on it. And it's it's a screaming deal. We're paying two hundred thousand a unit. The one next door sold for two thirty seven, and uh, a unit two hundred thirty seven thousand. It's on a lake. It's oh man, it just it's amazing that it's it's not completely subscribed yet. If you're interested, text the word partner to seven two three four five or go to creecapital.com. 
I'm super excited about this thing. It's every unit's got washer dryer and fireplaces. Anyway, I digress, but uh, uh, right down the road from you, right? Yeah, I mean, that's uh, my partner Lauren lives in San Antonio no, as yeah, well. So yeah, we, it's it's one of the hottest markets in the country. It's yep. it's crazy how well it's doing. I just got another uh, commercial real estate. Uh, you know, I get I get the emails from all the different big uh, outfits, uh, uh, big brokerages, and. Uh, media outlets and and they're just talking about how great San Antonio is. Yeah, Texas demographics of Texas continue mm -hmm. to rise yep. and boom, and yep. not enough housing stock, not enough right. multifamily. It's it's been a been so a you went into to Dallas invest. too, right? You're in Dallas. So now. We just launched in Dallas uh, uh, the Q1 of, of 2024. Yeah, okay. so we're ju okay. we're just getting our first uh, couple deals okay. uh, under contract. But I'm really excited because there's a lot more inventory in Dallas. You know, yeah, a lot more housing it's stock huge, and yeah. a lot more sort of flippable. Housing yeah. stock. I don't know if you know much about Austin, but it's... Well, Austin's hot. I mean, Austin's been so insane that, mm -hmm. I mean, I can see how you'd have trouble finding deals there. Exactly. Uh, Dallas, you've got so many different sub-markets that you, you have a lot more, you know, lower hanging fruit. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah awesome. You know, um, Austin's cool, though. I've been there once, got a great music scene, and I, I listen to Joe Rogan, who's in Austin, so I hear a lot of stuff him talking about, you know, a lot of comedy clubs and stuff there, but... Uh, yeah, it's got different vibes than the rest of Texas, but yeah, yeah great quality of life, great yeah. outdoor scene, yeah, sports, festivals, music. It's nice. a great place to live, but the real estate is priced completely different than the rest of right, the state. Right, 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 higher. right. No, I think you'll kill it in Dallas. That's that's the, where we have. That's where I have the most assets in Dallas as well. You get quite a few different complexes in Dallas. So. So what you see next is is taking this thing and going to other geographic markets and and. Uh, yeah, very cool. So yeah, I'd like I'd like to expand into other geographies. I, I think it also makes sense too, probably on on smaller uh, multifamily deals. You know, four to twelve kind of unit type stuff where we can mm -hmm. run a similar play. Yeah, because it's really about the that that execution of, you know, what's appropriate scope, what are the materials, and let's go go knock that out. Yeah. Now, I mean, you know, if you can help a, an operator that that bought a four unit or a twelve unit or whatever, as long as as long as uh, you know you're not priced too far out um, versus you know another GC, um, I could see that as a real value add for sure, no question. Um, so, do you have any mentors? Do you have any mentors in this path of yours? Uh, no, no, not really. Okay. Uh, no, I you know I I unfortunately you know figured out a lot of stuff, sort of trial and error on my own. I, you know I've been sort of an entrepreneur. Um, for for gosh 10 plus years now uh which is probably not what i would recommend <laughs> really well yeah. i've done it i've done it i've i've done it for 45 years so you know i can i feel you <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean it it, it, can, it can be sort of a you know a lonely road and you know other people's mistakes are a lot cheaper than your own um you know not that i haven't learned from other other people's well, mistakes, peaks but. and valleys you know but but it can be stressful you know that's why my hair is completely gray at this point <laughs> but uh yeah i've built 27 different businesses and uh you know several worth tens of millions many spectacular flaming seminars <laughs> uh, <laughs> i love that word uh seminar yeah for, i got it from tony for, robbins you know it's not a failure it's only a failure if you don't get your ass back up or you don't get the lessons you know there's right. always lessons you learn from these these quote unquote failures so you know i have a lot of people that listen to my show that know they need to go do something they know they you know they they're they're maybe in the rat race or maybe they're comfortable but they know they want more do you have any words of wisdom or any anything you might say to those people that uh, just haven't got off the fence yeah i i mean i liked i liked what you said about your houses in dallas you know being able to buy them for 20k and well, that was denver actually I, i'm sorry Den i'm denver, sorry denver yeah, yeah. Uh, you, being able to buy them for for 20k um because i you know i love that phrase that the, the best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago mm -hmm. uh, and the second best time is today mm -hmm. um that's what i'd say to folks you know you can't plant a tree 20 years ago and congrats if you did mm -hmm. um but you can plant one today. You can't plant one tomorrow. So um, you got to you got to take a concrete step. And and, you know, I make real estate content. Love your show. Thank you. But you got to at some point, you know, listening, consuming is not enough. You, you got to um, take a concrete physical step and, and get out there. Yeah. Massive freaking action. Exactly. So um, 
Are there any books that have helped you in your journey here? Obviously, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, I'm sure, but anything other than that? <laughs> that is there a gift, book that you gift more than another? Um, yeah, you know, it, it's not a great, uh, it's not a great real estate book. No, it doesn't matter. But, um, the Black Swan by oh, Nassim yeah. Taleb. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know why I did more to sort of change my thinking about risk, uncertainty, uh, unknown unknowns. Uh, made a lot of made a lot of money investing with sort of the principles of that book, mm -hmm. um, even though he you know didn't directly intend it to be sort of a, a real estate book. Um, love mm -hmm. that game, and I didn't, I didn't start with Rich Dad Poor Dad. Um, mm -hmm. There's a there's a, a book and I'm the author's name is blanking on me, but, um, it's called the real estate game. I mm -hmm. thought it was a fun, approachable way. It was the first sort of real estate book I ever picked up. Uh, and, 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 you know, filter it through the lens of sort of a game, uh, you know, monopoly style. I, I thought that was, I thought that was a great, That's cool. Great Absolutely. Read. Yeah. I love it. Love it. I mean, it, life is a game, you know, if you, when you, when you play life, that's, that's, a, that's a freaking life. Mm -hmm. um, so obviously you're a very driven guy. I know your families, you, you went to uh, Orlando with your kids, went to <laughs> Disney. I, I, we used to have annual passes. We'd go there, especially if a hurricane was coming, boy, the kids knew they were going to Disney <laughs> if there was a hurricane coming. But, uh, you know, you seem very driven and motivated. I'm guessing the why is the kids and the family. Yes. Yeah. 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 That, that's a great driver for me. I, you know, my, 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 um, you know, I, I found there's, uh, there's so much, uh, to be gained from a mission, from a purpose. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I mentioned, you mentioned, I, I went to Harvard for, for years. I feel like that when I was younger, I made sort of that my mission. I made getting there mm -hmm. my mission. Cool. Uh, and, and that was great. And it helped me to do that. But I realized once I was there, that was the wrong mission because mm -hmm. it wasn't really, uh, there was not a next then. So sort of mm -hmm. then the, the jobs or, or the, my career sort of took a aimless turn for a minute. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and, and so, uh, you know, yes, about advice, I think finding that sort of critical mission and vision, there's, mm -hmm. there's what's driving you and it's, it's family and it's support for them, but then really like a vision of what you can make your company or whatever your life, your life. Yeah. Um, hugely helpful hugely no, no question helpful. man it, you know when you can find your passion and you can find what you enjoy doing i mean you never work another day in your life are you enjoying what you're doing yeah i'm yeah, loving right? it I'm me loving too it. yeah so so you know you're passionate about it you're able to influence people because you're passionate because you love it so you know if you're listening to this and you don't love real estate yet you know you can associate pleasure with it and learn to love anything okay but if you can't learn to love, and i tell my warriors this my students if you can't learn to love this for god's sakes go do something else life is too freaking short to not do what you love and 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 then you when you can call it a mission or a purpose and it's got that backbone behind it success is inevitable amen so well listen brother i really appreciate you coming down this is a, a unique interview for us because we talk multifamily, but i'm starting to interject more other disciplines and flipping is i mean something i've done a lot of sure. but uh you know it's not something we've really talked on the show a lot about and you've got a cool model and uh, I'm sure you can be very successful. You're very sharp, but I appreciate you coming on. Brother. Yeah, no, this is great. Appreciate you having me on. Yeah, I, I love kind of broaden, broadening the horizons. Love to get to talk multifamily again a little bit with you. Yeah. And it's inspiring uh, what you've done, what you've built. So this, is, this has been great. Thank you, brother. So one other quick thing. We encounter so many people that are frankly frustrated. You know, they're looking in the mirror and they're frustrated that they haven't been able to escape the rat race. They haven't been able to build cash flow to the point where they're able to have financial and time freedom with their families. You know, and maybe they see other people buying real estate and creating, you know, incredible cash flow. And they think, well, it's just scary. You know, buying apartments is intimidating. And I get it. But see, that's why we created our Warrior Mentorship Program. They're our coaching students and they've had extraordinary results. My students, I've been teaching about five years and own upwards of 140,000 units now that we know of, right? And we feel like it's just getting going. Now we're looking to grow this group and really take it to the next level. And honestly believe that the greatest transfer of wealth could be upon us right now with this current economic environment. Everything's going on sale. 
So we're looking for people who want to follow a proven framework, really like a blueprint or a map, literally step by step. And then they're able to leverage our systems and our incredible network to raise money and equity, to find deals and close those deals and build partnerships really nationwide. So if you're interested in finding out more about how you can become more, in our incredible network and take advantage of the unbelievable opportunities that are upon us, you can apply to my Warrior Mentorship Program by texting the word CRUSH to 72345. Or you can go to mentorwithrod.com. And what we'll do is we'll set up a call so you can check us out and we can check you out and see if it's a fit. Now again, you can go to mentorwithrod.com or text the word CRUSH to 72345 to apply and we will speak soon.